readers and welcome back to class. My name is Mrs. Papineau and today I am going to be working with you on lesson three about wondering. Remember, wondering is a comprehension strategy we can use before, during, and after we read to make meaning of what we've heard or read. I can't wait to learn with you today. Before we get started, I thought it would be fun to look back on what we've been wondering so far about this text, Pet Show. Let's take a look at our chart. Now, before we started reading, we already started to ask some questions about the text. Here are some that you came up with. I wonder if they are going to a pet show. I wonder where the pet show will be. I wonder what types of pets will be at the show. While we were reading, you also came up with some great questions. Here are some of them. I wonder if Archie will find the cat. I wonder where the cat is. I wonder what Archie will do if he can't find the cat. That's not where we stopped, readers. Check out the rest of our list. You also wondered, what is inside Archie's bag? I wonder if the lady will keep the blue ribbon. I wonder if Archie will say the cat is his. And finally, when we got done with Pet Show, we were still wondering, can you believe it? Here are some of your ideas. I wonder if there will be another pet show. I wonder what Archie will do with the germ. I wonder what Archie and his friends will do next. Wow, readers, you asked some great questions. Today, we are going to reread Pet Show. And while I reread this great story to you, I want you to be thinking if any of our questions get answered in the story. Let's find out. Pet show. Everyone was talking about the pet show. The kids told each other about the pets they would bring. Matt said he would bring ants. I'm gonna bring my mouse, bragged Roberto. What are you gonna bring, Archie, the cat? Uh-huh, said Archie. The next day, they all got ready for the pet show. Where's the cat, Archie called. Anyone see the cat? Archie and Willie looked in the cat's favorite hangouts while Peter and Susie searched up and down the street. No cat. Archie's mother came to the window. Where can that cat be? He asked her. You know how independent he is, Archie. You never know when to expect him. But I expect him now. It's time for the pet show. Maybe he's inside somewhere. Archie ran into the building. After a while, he came to the window. I can't find him. I looked all over the place. You'd better start without me. Gee, we're sorry, Archie, said Peter. So long, said Susie. They got to the entrance. A lot of people were already there. Just then, Roberto's mouse took off. Willie chased the mouse. Roberto chased Willie. Peter chased Roberto. Susie chased Peter. And the show started. Line up with your pets, please, the judges called. They walked up and down, looking carefully at every pet and asking, How old is your pet? And what's your pet's name? Everyone got a prize for something. There was the noisiest parrot, the handsomest frog, the friendliest fishes, the yellowest canary, the busiest ants, the brightest goldfish, 
the longest dog, the fastest mouse, the softest puppy, the slowest turtle, and many more. At last. As the last prize was being awarded, someone shouted, Look, here comes Archie. Hello, you're just in time, a judge said. What's in the bag? My pet. May I see it, please? At that moment, the cat showed up. The other judge called out, a blue ribbon to the nice lady for the cat with the longest whiskers. Before anyone could say anything, he pinned a blue ribbon on the old woman and came back to Archie. What kind of a pet have you got in that jar? A germ, answered Archie. Hmm, what's your germ's name? Archie thought for a moment. Al, he said. The judges whispered to each other. A blue ribbon for Al, the quietest pet in the show, the judges announced. As everyone was leaving, the old woman came over to Archie. He's really your cat. Isn't he? She said. You should have the ribbon. It's okay, Archie said. You keep it. And he ran to join his friends. They passed the old woman on their way home. Thank you for the ribbon, she called. Archie smiled. It looks good on you. See you around. See you around, she said. And that's the end of the story. Are you thinking about some of our wonderings from our chart? Let's take a look if any of our questions got answered when we read today. I bet we can find a few answers. Let's start with this question. Did we find out what types of pets were at the pet show? Remember, we asked, I wonder what type of pets will be at the show? I hear and see a lot of you saying yes. Let's look in the text where we got our question answered. I have a feeling it's in that middle part when they all got their awards. Let's see. Hmm. <gasps> look, remember this page? This page showed us all of the types of animals that were at the pet show. I remember the author saying there were frogs and fishes and birds and ants and goldfish. Remember that? There was another question that we had that got answered in the story. Let's take a look. See this one right down here? We asked, I wonder what Archie will do if he can't find the cat. Do you remember what he did? That's right. Remember, he made up a new pet. He put a German in a jar and took him to the pet show. Let's take a look where that happened in our story. Remember, here he is running with his jar. And right when he opened it up, right? Let's keep looking. <gasps> He's showing the judges. And remember, they said, what's his name? And he said, what? Hell, that's right. Hey, I think we answered one more question. Let's take a look. We wondered right here, if the lady would keep the blue ribbon. Do you remember that? And what did we find out? Right? She got to keep it, didn't she? Wow. Archie was so generous. He's like, it's okay. You keep the ribbon. Remember? Look at her at the end of the story. She, she still has it on her. She got to wear it. 
Wow, readers, you asked so many great questions. Now, I gotta tell you something though. Not all the time do we get to find the answers to our questions inside of a book we read. Sometimes those, those answers just don't come. But you know what, that's okay. Because the more questions we're asking as we read, the better we're doing at thinking about the text. And that's what good readers do remember. So great job readers, great job with your wonderings this week, amazing. Now I'm wondering huh, if you remember some of the really important words that we learned about this week in this story. Hmm, do you remember two of them? Let's see if I show you some pictures to help. Do you remember this picture? Right, it's a picture of a girl washing the dishes all by herself. Do you remember the word to describe this girl? You're right, it was independent. This girl is independent because she is doing something all by herself. She doesn't need any help. Now, do you remember the opposite of independent? That's a trickier one, huh? You're right. It's the word dependent. Remember, dependent means you need help with something. And I showed you this picture. Remember, this girl was dependent because she's still learning how to swim and needs some help. I'm gonna show you another picture that we looked at earlier this week. It's of these two boys. And one boy is saying to the other, I'm so much stronger than you, look at me. Do you remember what word we use to describe someone who's doing this? Yeah, the word is brag, brag. It's like extra pride, right? So it's like feeling really good about something you're doing, but then like extra. Yeah. Now, I'd like you to play a fun game with me right now. And it's called, what do you think about? So when I say one of our new words from the week, I'd like you to make a picture in your mind of what you think about when you hear this word. What example comes to your mind? So I'm going to say the word independent. Sometimes it helps to close my eyes and I'll close my eyes. <sighs> oh, I've got it. When I imagined in my mind and saw the word independent, you know what I saw? I saw my daughter skiing down the ski slope all by herself without any help from me. She is an independent skier. She's able to do it all by herself. I bet some of you are coming up with some great visualizations of what it might look like for you to be independent. I bet there's some of you out there that can tie your shoes by yourself. Maybe you brush your teeth by yourself. I bet most of you get dressed by yourself. Those are all ways of being independent. Let's try it again with our other word. What about the word brag? When you hear the word brag, what do you see? Hmm. What do you think about? Yeah, I'm gonna close my eyes again, let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of a time when we were playing a game together as our family and one of my family members said, I won. They were proud, but like super extra proud, right? About something that they had done. Remember, bragging can be sometimes good, but sometimes bad, depending on your spirit, right? So being proud is okay and awesome, but kind of being extra proud and trying to push someone down and make them not feel so great, that can sometimes be bragging. Great job, readers. Words can be tricky sometimes, but you're smart. Okay, let's talk about your assignment today for after we've read together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I want everyone to find their uh, favorite part from today's story, the pet show. 
And remember, you can find this form in the supplemental materials that your parents can access on the Seattle Public Schools website. If you don't have a copy, that's okay. Just use a regular sheet of paper. Let me show you what to do. Here is the actual page, and it has a spot just like we practiced before to draw a picture and write about your favorite part. So I wrote the title of this week's story, The Pet Show. And I drew a picture of my favorite part, which was when Archie came to the pet show with a germ and a jar. I thought that was really fun. The cool thing about finding your favorite part is that it's unique to you. Everybody has their own favorite part, so don't feel like you have to copy mine. This is my favorite. So next, I get to choose what words I want to write down on the lines to match my picture. Hmm, to do some thinking. Hmm, I think I want to say something like, I liked when Archie brought the germ. Okay, so I'm gonna get ready to write. I know I need to start with a capital letter. So here I go. I liked when, wow, wow. hmm. Maybe I'll turn this way so you can see me better. That's better. I liked when Archie, and I'm gonna capitalize Archie's name because he is a proper noun. He is a character in the story. He has a name and names always get a capital letter. I liked when Archie brought the Germ. Make sure I'm making spaces between my words. In the jar. And I always want to make sure to end my sentence with some kind of punctuation. I think I'm going to do an exclamation mark because it made me really happy. Let's read what I wrote. I liked when Archie brought the germ in the jar. Now, you know, readers, you can always write more. Remember, you can use the magic word because to tell more about why you felt the way you did. It's been so fun to read with all of you this week. I'm so proud of your hard work. And I know that when you go to read your own books today and in the days to come, you will practice the skill of wondering before, during, and after you read. It's a superpower, so don't forget it. See you soon. Bye.